March 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Numbers chapters 12 through 14 of the Old Testament. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. They said, Has the Lord only spoken through Moses? Has he not also spoken through us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than any man on the face of the earth. The Lord spoke immediately to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. The three of you come to the tent of meeting. So the three of them went. And the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent. He then called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. The Lord said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision. I will speak with him in a dream. My servant Moses is not like this. He is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak face to face, openly and not in riddles, and he will see the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he departed. When the cloud departed from above the tent, Miriam became leprous as snow. Then Aaron looked at Miriam, and she was leprous. So Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, please do not hold the sin against us, in which we have acted foolishly and have sinned. Do not let her be like a baby born dead, whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. Then Moses cried to the Lord, Heal her now, O God. The Lord said to Moses, If her father had only spit in her face, would she not have been disgraced for seven days? Shut her out from the camp seven days, and afterward she can be brought back in again. So Miriam was shut outside of the camp for seven days, and the people did not journey on until Miriam was brought back in. After that, the people moved from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. The Lord spoke to Moses. Send out men to investigate the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. You are to send one man from each ancestral tribe, each one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran at the command of the Lord. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. Now these were the names from the tribe of Reuben, Shema, son of Zachar, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, son of Horai, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh. From the tribe of Issachar, Igal, son of Joseph. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, son of Raphu. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, son of Sodai. From the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, son of Susai. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, son of Gemali. From the tribe of Asher, Sether, son of Michael. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, son of Vashsai. From the tribe of Gad, Guiel, son of Makai. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to investigate the land. And Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name Joshua. When Moses sent them to investigate the land of Canaan, he told them, Go up through the Negev, and then go up into the hill country and see what the land is like, and whether the people who live in it are strong or weak, few or many, and whether the land they live in is good or bad, and whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or fortified cities, and whether the land is rich or poor, and whether or not there are forests in it, and be brave, and bring back some of the fruit of the land. Now it was the time of year for the first ripe grapes. So they went up and investigated the land from the wilderness of Zin to Rehob at the entrance of Hamath. When they went up through the Negev, they came to Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, descendants of Anak, were living. Now Hebron had been built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they came to the valley of Eshkol, they cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they carried it on a staff between two men, as well as some of the pomegranates and the figs. That place was called the Eshkol Valley because of the cluster of grapes that the Israelites cut from there. 
they returned from investigating the land after 40 days. They came back to Moses and Aaron and to the whole community of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They reported to the whole community and showed the fruit of the land. They told Moses, We went to the land where you sent us. It is indeed flowing with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. But the inhabitants are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites lived in the land of Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses, saying, Let us go up and occupy it, for we are well able to conquer it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, because they are stronger than we are. Then they presented the Israelites with a discouraging report of the land they had investigated, saying, the land that we pass through to investigate is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw there of a great stature. We even saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim, and we seemed like grasshoppers both to ourselves and to them. Then all the community raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. And all the Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had perished in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us into this land only to be killed by the sword, that our wives and our children should become plunder? Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let's appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell down with their faces to the ground before the whole assembled community of the Israelites. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, two of those who had investigated the land, tore their garments. They said to the whole community of the Israelites, The land we pass through to investigate is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their protection has turned aside from them, but the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. However, the whole community threatened to stone them, but the glory of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tent of meeting. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people despise me, and how long will they not believe in me? In spite of the signs that I have done among them, I will strike them with the pestilence, and I will disinherit them. I will make you into a nation that is greater and mightier than they. Moses said to the Lord, When the Egyptians hear it, for you brought up this people by your power from among them, then they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among this people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, that your cloud stands over them, and that you go before them by day in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. If you kill this entire people at once, then the nations that have heard of your fame will say, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land that he swore to them, he killed them in the wilderness. So now let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have said. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in loyal love, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children until the third and fourth generations. Please forgive the iniquity of this people according to your great loyal love, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Then the Lord said, I have forgiven them as you ask, but truly as I live all the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. For all the people have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have tempted me now these ten times, and have not obeyed me. They will by no means see the land that I swore to their fathers, nor will any of them who despise me see it. Only my servant Caleb, because he had a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he had gone, and his descendants will possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites were living in the valleys. Tomorrow turn and journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. 
How long must I bear with this evil congregation that murmurs against me? I have heard the complaints of the Israelites that they murmured against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, I will surely do to you just what you have spoken in my hearing. Your dead bodies will fall in the wilderness. All those of you who were numbered according to your full number from 20 years old and upward who have murmured against me, you will by no means enter into the land where I swore to settle you. The only exceptions are Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. But I will bring in your little ones, whom you said would become victims of war, and they will enjoy the land that you have despised. But as for you, your dead bodies will fall in this wilderness, and your children will wander in the wilderness forty years and suffer for your unfaithfulness, until your dead bodies lie finished in the wilderness. According to the number of the days you have investigated this land, forty days, one day for a year, you will suffer for your iniquities, forty years, and you will know what it means to thwart me. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do so to all this evil congregation that has gathered together against me. In this wilderness they will be finished, and there they will die. The men whom Moses sent to investigate the land who returned and made the whole community murmur against him by producing an evil report about the land. Those men who produced the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among the men who went to investigate the land, lived. When Moses told these things to all the Israelites, the people mourned greatly. And early in the morning they went up to the crest of the hill country, saying, here we are, and we will go up to the place that the Lord commanded, for we have sinned. But Moses said, Why are you now transgressing the commandment of the Lord? It will not succeed. Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you, and you will be defeated before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you will fall by the sword. Because you have turned away from the Lord, the Lord will not be with you. But they dared to go up to the crest of the hill, although neither the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. So the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country swooped down and attacked them as far as Hormah. God, I hear so often people make comments about the Old Testament, about how it's not relevant to us anymore was written so long ago it was such a different culture are you serious these people are exactly the same as us you show us promise after promise after promise blessing after blessing after blessing you've never lied to us you've never betrayed us you've never been inconsistent to us whatsoever and yet, yet we do exactly what they do when they sent the scouts out to check out this uh, land that that you had promised them and they come back scared. Something was too big, too scary, too something for us to handle. And so we come back and we make a big deal out of why it's not going to happen or why we won't be able to do it. Completely forgetting that with you all, things are possible. All, capital all. Not 99%, but all things are possible. Here we see a very severe dis discipline for some of the scouts, except for the two who knew with you all things were possible. Sometimes we forget that we have disciplines in our life from you today, just like the people in the Old Testament. Thankfully, most of the time it's not death. But we do have consequences to deal with when we don't trust in you and we don't abide by you. And when you show us a plan and we hem and we ha, or like me, I throw a tantrum, we'll still get to the plan with or without me. But there's going to be consequences for me. And sometimes those consequences are the delay of the plan. There's been things in my life that I've seen delayed, thankfully not 40 years, but some of them close to that all because of my ego, my desire to have things done my way, 
my belief that I had to do them and I couldn't trust in your strength. God, I think about the people of the Old Testament so much and how little, in fact, we have not changed a single bit <laughs> from the people of the Old Testament. And then when you show us the consequence of our action, then we do the exact same sin again. We don't, we didn't like the initial idea, so we threw a fit. Then you show us the consequence of our action and we don't like the consequence, so we still try and do things our own way. It doesn't say in here how many people died as they were driven back to Horma. But I suspect quite a few <laughs> were killed in the process of again trying to do things their own way. God, today, let us rely on your strength. You are all powerful. All. Not 99%. You are all powerful. And you have given us full permission to tap into that strength so that we can do all the things that you command us, all the things you ask of us, so we can do your will each and every single day. We simply need to ask to lay at your feet our ego, our desire to be independent, our desire to do things our way, and take on your strength. I love, uh, there's a prayer out there about emptying me of everything that is me and filling it up with everything that is you, God. That is me today. <laughs> please, please take away everything from me that is stopping me from living fully the life that you want me to for your will. God, I know you have so many blessings just waiting to pour down into my life so that I can use those blessings in your glory for other people. And I'm holding them up. There was a, a story um, that I told to the youth group one day. And I'm sure there's versions of it, of it out there. I'm sure I'm not the one who came up with it. But the whole story of dying and going to heaven and, and being met at the gate for my tour of heaven. And getting shown all the amazing things in heaven and just the beautifulness and the glorification of you and, and the songs and just the amazingness of heaven. And my host is showing me everything except for one building. And of course, my curiosity is I want to see that one building. And he says, I <laughs> recommend we not go see that building. No, no, no. On my insistence, I really want to go into that building. And he says, well, I need to get special permission from God, but okay, if you want to go into that building, we'll go into that building. And the building, as I get up closer to it, is gigantic. It just seems to go on forever. And I pull open the huge doors that take every piece of my strength to open. And as I open the doors, I am overwhelmed with what I see, just packages after packages after packages, every shape, every size, small, gigantic wrapped beautifully in the most glorious paper I've ever seen and the biggest bows and they're just sparkling. Oh my goodness. My eyes are huge with wonderment and also a question. And I turn to my host and, and ask him, what are all these? Janelle, he replies, that would be better left unsaid. Can we just go? Then I look at the packages again. I notice there's names on all of them. And I run down the aisles until I find the package with my name on it. And it's huge. So I ask permission. Can I have my package? Can I open my package? Again, my host says, I recommend against it. But if that's what you want, go ahead. And I tear open this beautiful paper, unlike any paper I've ever seen before. And the bow goes flying. And I look inside and my eyes grow big. Not with wonderment this time, but sheer confusion. And I look back at the host. And I look back at what's inside this box. 
And he says, I told you, it would be better that you not know. These are all the blessings that God wanted to give you while you were still on earth. Yet he couldn't because your will was in the way of his will. Inside that box were people. Inside that box were relationships. Inside that box were opportunities to talk to people about you, God. Inside that box were some of the most amazing blessings that would glorify you. And yet I chose my ego, my sin, over these blessings. And for that today, I truly apologize because I have no doubt that even today, I'm doing things that are pausing or stopping or delaying blessings to come into my life that I could use to glorify you. As we walk through our day today, God, let us rely on your strength. Let us be able to put everything at your feet and have you fill us up with everything that you desire for us. We know that it is all for good. Allow us to hold on to that, that even when we go through something that we consider bad, that it is still for good and you will still figure out a way to use it for good. Let us hold on to your strength today and use that strength to do things that we never thought were possible, including conquering the giants of new worlds that you have promised us through your blessings. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>